Welcome to the Late Night Race Review. George whacks the sausage and ends up at the rear with a disappointing finish. Max goes again and gives us the money shot as usual. Lando plays the bad boy and the FAA gets the whips out. And Alonso and Hamilton prove the old guys still have the endurance to go the distance. It's the Canadian Grand Prix. Don't forget to support the podcast by hitting those like, follow and subscribe buttons. Welcome back to the Late Night Race Review. I'm Owen Scott. And with me, as always, is Dave Jericho and Isidro Consalvish. And firstly, I'd like to thank Dave for keeping the, the hot seat nice and warm. Although I have to say, my, my ass groove is a little bit less uncomfortable this week. Um, you messed with it. That's... Uh... Got a fat ass. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to beat around the bush about it, but look, you called it. Um, all right, Dave. Before we get stuck into the race, uh, do you want to give us an update on the fantasy? Alrighty. Uh, well, we've only got the qualifying points to go on at the moment. So um, again, find us late night race review F one fantasy game official prizes end of season. We do this every week. I'm getting bored of doing it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what a way to promote our league. <laughs> um, all right, so I have moved up to third. Woo, everyone's glad to hear that. Um, yeah. And yeah. let's see. Stop Inventing, still at number one, has been at Jesus. number one all season so far. Um, let me see. Where is Zedro? Is 17th. And Scotty, you are 19th. So ah. non-movers there. So... Um, We'll see. We'll check in again at the end of the podcast, see if the, the scores have calculated. Jeez, I couldn't say calculated. What the hell happened there? <laughs> we'll see if the scores have calculated. And uh, if not, you'll have to wait till next week. Yeah, well, I might uh, this week I might take a look at the fantasy and maybe change my team around from, from week one. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Don't start laying the groundwork for excuses <laughs> now as to why you're doing crap. <laughs> well, yeah. The other thing is I'm also the stop inventing as well. That's my second uh, profile. It is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, like an Irish farmer during the summer, we all prayed for the rain, but it never came. Unlike Christian Horner, who will be feeling all sorts of post-race joy with red getting their 100th win in F1. Plenty to jump into here, Dave, but let's start at the top and quickly dissect what we can of Max Verstappen's race today. Ooh, I, do, do you know, um, it was a good race from Max Verstappen, what we expect. Look, he won. Let's not, we don't really need to tackle that. Uh, <laughs> we know how he wins every week. He's able to control the race. The only difference this week is I felt uh, we were a little bit cheated. I think Aston Martin had a little bit more to offer. Um, but unfortunately, the cooling issues meant that we weren't really able to see the pace or whether Max Verstappen was sort of nursing those tires. Um, so we didn't get to really see what was going to happen or what, what sort of race we could have had. But um, yeah, great race. Great to see them get the, the 100 race wins. Um, I'm not sure what's the um, do we know what the split is between uh, Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen now in terms of race wins? No. Um, yeah, I know. I, I threw that out there. I didn't think anyone was going to know off the top of their head. But <laughs> Shakes I mean, head furiously. No. <laughs> this is not Sky Sports F1 here. Like, <laughs> we are not prepared. <laughs> Myself and Isidro were doing that thing from Team America where we were waving our hands going, like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I saw smoke for a second coming out of Isidro's ears. <laughs> um, but yeah, great. They're, they're, they're really cementing their, their dominance now in, in Formula One, aren't they? Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, look... It's funny that that it's come so quick as well. I mean, obviously they dominated, then Mercedes dominated, and now we're back to Red Bull dominating again. So, um, but look, you can't take it away from them. And actually, you know, I was watching the race, and just something popped into my head, and I was kind of like, it's very easy, like people on social media and just in general, kind of pub banter in general, that we tend to undermine, um the dominant car like we say mm. you know we look at red bull dominating and everybody's every quick to kind of say oh yeah well you stick any driver you stick latifi in that red bull and he's gonna win you know it's it's such a dominant car that's how dominant it is you could put anybody in it well you know and that, that that's something we've always heard like ever since like schumacher like going back even the mclarens all that kind of stuff but i mean look at it this way i mean look at perez isn't making it happen like you know mm. it's it's sort of once in a generation we get lucky that we get an outstanding driver paired up with an outstanding car mm. 
we've had it with obviously Lewis and the Mercedes. We've had it with Sebastian and the um, Red Bull. We have it now with Max and the Red Bull. We always had it with Schumacher and the Ferraris. We've had it with, um, you know, the likes of um, the, the David Coulthard and stuff like that for the uh, McLarens. And, you know, we've had loads of these, um, just like I said, it seems to be generational. So people just turn around and saying, you know, oh, you know, you stick anyone in that car and they're bound to win. It's just, it's dominance. You know, it's not, we're seeing dominance because we've got an amazing driver in an amazing car. Um, and, you know, sorry to say that's obviously putting Perez down a little bit, but that is the, that is the facts, you know? Mm. I think we, when when there is dominance in sports, we always like to see something rival it though. You've got your Ronaldo and your Messi, and then you've got like Man City and Oh, actually, no, there's no one there either. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it's when there's someone very clearly out the top like this, it starts to, that's when people start to get a little bit frustrated with it and try to put it down wherever they mm. can, really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, that, and that's, look, I, I done the same. Like, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Like, especially when it was like Lewis Hamilton and the Mercedes dominating, I was kind of, I was quick to kind of say, look, I think you could put some of the backmarker drivers in that car and they'll win you a race. Mm. Um. But at the same time, you had to remember that you had a very good Valtteri Bottas partnered with Lewis Hamilton, and he wasn't beating. Now, he was finishing second a lot more than uh, Sergio Perez is for Red Bull. But, you know, he wasn't, um, you know, he wasn't winning a world championship. So, you know, look, we got to take it that, you know, every, you know, once in a generation, we get an amazing driver paired with an amazing car. And that's like, that's just the facts. That's what we're seeing now. Um, and it just seems to be, unfortunately, with Formula One, we tend to only get one incident of that. We rarely get two in a given season. Um, we got lucky with the uh, with the uh, Hamilton and Verstappen battles um, mm. that we had early on. Um, that was probably the the closest we were going to get. And then obviously now we've got the new generation of cars that's scuppered that. So. Um, yeah, look, that's it. I just wanted to say my piece on that popped up into my mind when I was watching the race today. Uh, see, Drew, an interesting moment with uh, with Max when he had a slight wobble in the, in the final few laps and he went over the radio and you could hear him having a little bit of a laugh about um, having a wobble in the car. But it just shows how comfortable he is this year that he can he can have that wobble, nearly lose the car, and he's still just having a little laugh about it over the radio. He's He's just, he's cruising out there, isn't he? Yeah, he's definitely confident. The fact that he just was giggle a little bit just because he was almost uh, could lost the race in two seconds to, <laughs> on that on that track. But uh, yeah, he's just that confident. He knows what he's doing. He trusts the car. He trusts the team. And today was just another day for him. Mm. Do Do we think we could see a, a championship win for him a little bit earlier than even last year, Dave? Oh, 100 mm. percent. I mean. How could you? I mean, the question should be: Do we think he won't win it earlier? Do you know, like yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah. that's that's more of a debate. But uh, you know, I think it's almost a certainty that he's going to win it in sort of record time this year. Mm. I mean, like who? Else? Like I, I just nobody's. I again, we didn't get to see what the Aston Martin had to offer, and in terms of whether they were actually making real gains. Mm. Um, so, I mean, uh, unlikely they've made enough gains that even if they didn't have the cooling issues, they were going to to uh, to challenge them for the the race win. But um, yeah, I, I I just don't see it. Uh, anyone else kind of getting in his way for that uh, sort of sort of record breaking win? Yeah, and and Paris today with a slightly different race, um, starting on the the hard tires and looking to play that long game. And even though he managed to make it into the points. He didn't quite blow us away, did he, Isidro? No, it was the same as uh, as the previous race. It was mo he had the car, but he, he, he did, it was an average drive for him. Mm. He has a Red Bull. He should be should be fighting for the podium and not just fighting to for the points for the top ten. It was just an average drive again from uh, from Paris. He's not really doing good. He started well, but he's been downhill since then. Uh, and the same in qualifying, Dave. Christian Horner didn't look too uh, too happy with him after after qualifying either. Yeah, Christian Horner had some comments um, after qualifying, saying that he needs to relax. That he had sort of from early on that there was the potential uh, of a you know a challenge for. I think we all said it that you know he does have the chance this year of challenging for the world title, and I think. 
he obviously knew that because Christian Horner had come out and said that he l- needs to learn to relax. And well, I don't know whether he said and enjoy his racing or just or focus on individual races or something like that. I can't quite remember, but I think what he was hinting at was the pressure of a potential world title challenge was on his shoulders and he's just folding like he's just mm-hmm. absolutely folding. Um, so I yeah, I, I don't know what to make of him because, like I said, the qualifying is where he seems to be. Well, it, the qualifying is where the biggest damage is being done. But then come the race pace, uh, he's he just I mean, look, t- t- today, like, you know, you thought ah, he's going to take those Ferraris. He's going to be up on the back of Hamilton soon. And then he just as the race progressed, he just started dropping off and off and off from the Ferraris that, who look, I know they had a bit of a cushy race today. Like it's, uh, he should have been challenging them easily. I mean, again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about an unbelievable driver in an unbelievable car gives us what we're getting from Max Verstappen. And then literally on the opposite side of that coin, you have a driver who's still an excellent driver. So let's not take it away from Sergio Perez. He's an excellent, excellent driver, but he's not doing the business in that excellent car so that just goes to show you know how good max verstappen actually is versus um you know an an all already kind of excellent driver in in sergio perez um not being able to to sort of do the do the business so Mm. yeah disappointing disappointing all around uh, interesting thought just popped into my head as you we were saying that there. and Did it? Yeah, well, stop me if I'm going too far with this one. But is there a case for mounting pressure to to perform uh, as these races go by and the results don't come in? Is there maybe a shout for, you know, science isn't completely in love with, with Ferrari, Ferrari's not in love with science. Is there maybe a shout there for a, a science to Red Bull or back to Red Bull? Oh, um. <clears throat> No, uh, I doubt it is probably the answer to that one. Mm. But that's not to say if Perez completely hits a wall, like um, <laughs> figuratively and literally, um, then like it wouldn't be outside of the realm of Helmut Marco to just say, do you know what? We need Daniel Ricciardo in that seat to try and yeah. salvage something or to try and get something, you know, to make sure that the team win the constructors championship um like let me just uh well we're talking about this let me just quickly see what the um constructor standings are here at the moment so there's okay there's a huge gap in fairness now like there, there's like double the gap between mercedes and red bull mm. but i mean you know it's not going to take long for mercedes and to say get a uh, consistent second and third or third and fourth um for them to catch up on max verstappen just getting first on his own and and Perez checking out further back. So um so yeah I I I re- I don't think it would get that drastic but um I think I think he'll he'll get through the season. They may make a decision on this at the end of the season because it's clear he can't he, you know when the pressure is on about a world title battle not only is he folding under that pressure but he's also of no help to his teammate or the team in getting that second place. So he almost is better knowing that, look, you're playing second fiddle. You're the wingman. End of story. That seems to be his wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, title challenge just seems to just seems to sort of things just fall apart for him. So, um, yeah, I don't think it'd be long before Mercedes would, would be catching them. Um, but I don't think that will be a decision now that Helmut Marko or Red Bull will make mid-season. Uh, it'd be very unlikely. Yeah, it's a bit too early to be shouting for that type of stuff. Oh, though, completely, completely, yeah. Um, you mentioned Mercedes there. Uh, Isidro, a, a mixed bag today, but overall a positive weekend, and he had another podium for Lewis Hamilton. And There was an interesting tussle evolving between himself and Alonso, and it seemed to seemed to slightly fizzle out near enough the end there, but a really great performance for, from Hamilton and, and Mercedes somewhat today. Yeah, Mercedes definitely. Uh, we could see the, the work they've been doing, the upgrades, it showed today Hamilton had the had the car and he did quite well. He fought uh, Alonso uh, to get the second place, but uh, Alonso was more experienced. But Mercedes is doing well and Hamilton did very, very good today, I have to say. 
although that uh, incident in the pit in the pit lane uh mm. for me Hamilton was was on the wrong i'm surprised there was nothing from uh, from the steward and i wonder if they said nothing norris and uh albon, norris as and well. albon had the same and i wonder if it was only uh norris and albon if there was actually a penalty but because we are talking about hamilton and mercedes steward just said no nothing to see here just uh, carry on but overall no mercedes is doing great uh, we can see the car is much different than it was what three races ago or from the beginning Mm-hmm. So there's definitely a lot of work being done, and today we could see that. Dave, go on. I was just going to say, do you think uh, just with that? Yeah, I thought it was an unsafe release now. I think it was, or yeah. it was certainly borderline unsafe release. Um, and I just got the feeling that the stewards were sort of told to be a little bit more lenient yeah. uh, this weekend for some reason, because there was things that weren't being... That, that were kind of penalties uh, that would normally have been given that we would have all been arguing about saying, oh, come on, you know, just let them race. Mm. Now I kind of get the impression that they're just testing the waters of that, just let it happen and let's not give penalties for every single potential infringement um, and just, uh, you know, just let the race unfold. So I think that's what happened. Um, but um, yeah, that's all. Sorry. Yeah, um, so it seemed like like things were maybe starting to click for Hamilton and Mercedes this season, and a new contract, and we expect Hamilton to continue to push, uh, push on, and maybe throw his hat in the ring for what's clearly a race for second place. Do you think that's that's a possibility, Dave? Yeah, I think so. I think they've got. Uh, we've said it a million and one times, but I think genuinely this time they actually have an understanding of the direction they're going, and uh, the upgrades seem to be working. Um, maybe a bit earlier, like I said, a lot of like, like Albon said, even in today's race, that you know, it could be a bit track specific for their car, and that could be similar to for Mercedes, it could be track specific. But hopefully, now we'll see in Austria. Austria is a track that should suit that Mercedes as well. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, we'll see. But I, I, I think they're definitely it's it's them or Aston Martin for that second place. There is absolutely nobody else that's even coming close to them. And I think I would have thought Mercedes would have been the more likely candidate to sort of I'm not saying challenge uh, Red Bull for the titles or anything like that. Because I think that ship has sailed. But just to start challenging for a couple of race wins later on, on in the season, I thought Mercedes might have been the ones to have the clout to be able to do that in the development race. Mm. I don't know. I think Aston Martin might uh, might have something to 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 offer in that. Uh, regard as well. I think I think they they might challenge for some race wins against Red Bull towards the end of the season. Okay, yeah. But before I segue, that would have been a beautiful time to segue to Aston Martin. But we got to talk about George Russell today first of all. Um, slightly unfortunate uh, at the end there, a brave recovery drive, hitting the, the the wall there in lap thirteen, and somehow limping back to the pits. Only to fight back into the into the points and then to ultimately kind of succumb to that, uh, the damage that was uh, originally there. What what did you think of of George's drive today, Dave? Ah, oh, it was a great drive. I mean, he did exactly what Verstappen did, but the only difference is Verstappen managed to save himself, yes. and uh, Russell didn't. You know, he clipped that sausage curb or sleeping policeman, whatever you want to call it, and uh, and he hit the wall, and Max didn't. Max managed to have a little laugh about it over the radio. And uh, Russell had a bit of a cry about it over the radio. So, um, but his recovery from the back was brilliant. Um, I'm sure everybody was thinking, "Ooh, Jensen Button, 2000 was 2011 or something like that." Mm. Um, you know, is he going to kind of get up higher in the points and have one of the best recovery drives we've seen in Canada? But uh, alas, it wasn't to be. He was. You could tell, sort of towards the end, before he was, uh, before he had to retire the car. You could see he just he was struggling to get past um and, and do his overtakes and stuff like that. So I think already he was having he was having issues. Uh, and then it was obviously clear then when he was asked to retire the car. But overall, great drive. And again, uh a driver that um I think will suit Mercedes. You know, they've got great pairing there that will yeah. definitely give them great constructor points. Um, and you know, exactly will will hopefully or not hopefully, but will possibly give them that second place. Because Stroll is str- struggling at Aston Martin. There's your second segue offer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to take it just yet. I'm going to ask a question first of all. Do we feel that Mercedes is possibly the most even lineup in terms of of drivers? 
Isidro yeah. first, go on. Yeah, it's definitely the best duel. Hamilton has the experience. Russell um, is a very good driver. And I think it's probably, like I say, it's the best duo that, that uh, we could see in the track at mm-hmm. the moment. Definitely the most solid anyway. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, yeah, no question. I can only agree with that, that they're, they're, they're definitely the strongest pairing in, mm-hmm. on the grid. Put those right. two in the Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I, I'm going to take you up on your on your segue offer now. Um, Aston Martin or Team Alonso, as I'm naming them uh, from now on, uh, with another wily drive. He showed us again that he uh, that or while he's a world champion, why he is uh, up at the top of of the the standings every week. He had a fantastic race today, didn't he? Uh, yeah, even with the, the, uh, sorry, I just, uh, threw something across my office and um, <laughs> I just shot out of my hand. I had no idea where it went. Um, yeah, he's, um, even with that, the, the car that, you know, he managing the brakes, uh, you could tell earlier on, he was frustrated because he was to- told to lift and coast hmm. pretty much from the get go. I mean, I think we were only about 20 laps in and he was told to lift and coast and he was saying like i you know i want to win the race here man like and uh, you know but he managed uh i mean he kept what i think it was like a 5 second gap or something like that to to lewis hamilton hamilton then was starting to gain on him and got within sort of 2 seconds or a second and a half and you were thinking okay there's a challenge here and obviously with 8 laps left or whatever i think Aston martin realized Do you know what the brakes everything, everything will survive 8 laps so you know give it a little bit of gas and uh, he started stretching out ahead so that that's also a good indication of you know maybe the, the Aston Martins are still a little bit ahead of the Mercedes in terms of performance, but um, no, won't wouldn't take anything away from Alonso. Great great drive under the circumstances. Yeah. Disappointing as well that he wasn't able to to show the true pace of that car. Yeah, what do we think of Alonso today, Isidro? Uh he did very good, and I think we haven't seen the true colors of the Aston Martin today again. Alonso was just trying to finish the race in second, fight off Hamilton. Concerned about the the brakes and the tires and everything, so I think the that car still has more uh, more to show. And mm. if Alonso was saying that I want to win the race, he definitely knows that the car mm. can do much more that that we've seen so far. So yeah. looking for for the next uh, for the next race because there's definitely something on the Aston Martin. Do do we actually feel that this Aston Martin can beat Max Verstappen in a Red Bull? Yes. Ooh. On the perfect conditions, Aston Martin, if it's side by side, yeah, I think we haven't seen what Aston Martin can can give on the track. Oh, I, I feel another internet meme coming up now. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> going to jump on that one. Uh, what do you think, Dave? Um, in their, like, in their current form, like, like as in like today's race, or are we talking like, you know, do we see them developing this car more uh quicker than red bull development wise uh yeah yeah i hope i hope so i think they will definitely uh towards the end of the the season i think they 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 could have the pace on certain and like um as Idra said i agree with what he said there under the right conditions i don't think they're going to even development wise i don't think they're going to have a car that's going to beat the red bull uh, week in week out on any circuit not a chance but find a, a circuit that suits their car um, and uh, I think they'll get it in a position that would maybe uh, challenge the Red Bull and Max for, for a race win by the end of the season uh, I don't see why not Okay, um, I had another note here for Aston Martin it was uh, Lance Stroll also was driving for Aston Martin today exclamation mark okay moving on um, <laughs> <laughs> Ferrari with what looked like a- another weekend to forget managed to end up in a somewhat decent place of 4th and 5th position uh, respectively and they managed to take advantage of the safety car pit stops and for, w- for once what was a strategy that was on point seemingly Dave yeah I I jumped the gun i was straight on the in in the our whatsapp group kind of going uh like what the fuck a ferrari done now because i mean they were technically like i mean those those tires i didn't think were gonna last they were now uh sort of in fourth and fifth i think they were at that stage uh you know and they have if they pit stop anywhere in the next sort of 10 15 laps they're going to be back down way down at the back of the, the pack um 
but it worked. Yeah, they went for a one stop strategy and uh, fucking. I don't know whether I, I, I'm not sure whether it was just a good strategy or blind luck that they were just <laughs> they decided to go. Like I don't know whether they thought, do you know what? This is a track that gets safety cars. Let's leave the lads out. Let's gamble that there's going to be another safety car, and then we'll do our our two stops. You know, but but just stop later um, mm. than everyone else. And uh, yeah, so I don't know whether it, that they went with that strategy, and it just turned out that the lads were able to nurse their tires and uh, and go for the one stop. But look, whatever it was, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that it was just a good strategy call. And I mean, we haven't given them that in a long time, so. Let's say they just they nailed it this week. Um, even though it didn't look like Carlos Sainz agreed with them, he was back arguing about strategies and stuff, which again shows the uh, lack of trust in between driver and uh, pit wall. So, but uh, yeah, they got it right. Let's uh, let's all celebrate. Pants off. Yeah, <laughs> and on on that uh, the Carlos Sainz being frustrated, there was the message across the it was Leclerc's radio to say that uh, Sainz will not attack you. Um, what was this procedure? Was it was it just managing tires, driver preference, or was it a good shout to, uh, by Ferrari to kind of just hold our position? Let's get these points, um, or are we seeing a bit of preference towards Leclerc over Sainz again? I think it was more a punishment to Sainz. Right. What he did on qualification, on qualification, and on the free practice, I think it was more a punishment because points-wise, it makes sense to have the signs go over Leclerc, since mm-hmm. signs is way ahead on the on the grid. So I think it was more a punishment, and signs not happy with that. He's definitely a better driver than Leclerc. He deserves to to get to get more points. After all, that that's that's what that's what we want on the race very interesting Dave was it a punishment isn't that just some Ferrari fucking bullshit like, <laughs> I mean why would you sacrifice like your fastest driver on the day from possibly getting a podium I mean I think he had the potential uh, at, uh, certainly uh, early on mid mid race to if he had gotten past Le- or been allowed to go past Leclerc uh, I think he would have caught uh, Lewis Hamilton. I just think he, today he had he possibly had the pace to do that. And what did they do? They just had him sitting there for fucking forty laps. Sorry, fucking cursing everywhere, but fucking forty laps. Like I just I was watching. I'm going, what are you doing? Like, mm. like you, why do you have him sitting there? Like it's absolutely no benefit if you just say, do you know what, lads? Swap position. He's faster. Let's not wipe each other out in battling for this position. Charles, he's faster than you. Swallow it. That's what's happening. Uh, let him go. If he doesn't take Hamilton, we switch the places back at the end. If he does, then you've got yourself a podium, and now all of a sudden Ferrari look a hell of a lot better with a podium on under their belt. But no, what did they do? Oh, don't attack Charles. Are you out of your <sighs> fucking mind? Like, yeah, Ferrari shit. Yeah, they seem very determined to just keep Charles in that our number one driver position. I think Sainz has somewhat uh, dirtied his bib a little bit there, has he, over the last few weeks? What, just mouthing off like at the... Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, can you... Like, I I, I don't blame either side. Like, I mean, like, that's what I said. The the, the relationship has just broken down between driver and team. Yeah. Um, he doesn't trust the strategy calls, hence why he was debating it. He's also making silly on track decisions. I mean, we saw even in the the quali and stuff like that some some odd uh, <laughs> placements of the cars uh, uh, impeding the Alpines and stuff like that. Like, there's just bits and pieces like that that he's been doing lately. Um, but at the same time, the team uh, like have haven't had a, exactly a good track record of looking after him mm. through strategy, car reliability, and have cost him probably more than he has cost them. So. Um, I largely, I think if I was Carlos Sainz, I'd be going back to my trailer going, ain't this some fucking Ferrari bullshit? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Very interesting. It's interesting to see how that, that will develop over the next few months, the, the whole Carlos Sainz and Ferrari thing and what his options may be, if there is any, uh, in the future for him. 
I hope it just absolutely implodes. I love yeah. a good absolute train wreck. And yeah. <laughs> nobody deserves it more for some reason at the moment. I just <laughs> want to see shit go bad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very interesting. Um, all right, let's uh, let's tackle somewhat of the, the best of the rest. I, I feel bad kind of saying that he's the best of the rest today, but a massive shout out to Alex Albon with a mammoth weekend. Excellent quality, super race, finally proving that our Albon top 10 shouts are, are justified weekly. Dave, what do you think of Albon? <laughs> they, they, do you know, he really, uh, he did an amazing job today in that car with a, I, I, he had the upgrades and he was, two things, he was under pressure because they were the only upgrades they have for that car. So if he had crashed <laughs> it and binned it in a wall, they have no parts to rebuild a new one at the moment. So that is the, all they had. Like, So there was the pressure of that, of to be able to bring it home safely in one piece. That was the first uh sort of uh, that was the first job well done for him that he did so did so um uh with that pressure on his shoulders but the second one then obviously is his tires were shot like his tires were like what, 50 laps old or something like that by the end of the race um and he managed to keep Ocon he kept uh what Bottas Norris all these lads behind him and convincingly kept them behind him like you know and they had drs and that car was still on that back straight coming up to the the start finish and that chica last chicane that car was comfortably even cancelling out the drs that ocon had so brilliant hats off to albon I think he's I, I i always said i think he was a good driver i said it that he was able to squeeze out of that williams like what george russell was able to do as well when he was there um i think that I think um, Williams probably couldn't have any better driver in their car for the current position that they're in. Developing that car, they want someone that's going to extract the best out of it. And I think in Alex Albon, they have just that. Mm. He seems to have a little bit of a history of doing that. If you remember back to Australia, let those tires go as long as they could possibly go and yeah, just yeah. pull the most out of the guitar, or out of the guitar, out of the car, <laughs> um, and got uh, got points in the end again for Williams. He's a bit of a hero in that in that Williams, isn't he? Yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely class, class. Mm. I'm delighted for them that they, that he's there, and I think I think he should. Uh, uh, now, short of obviously Williams dropping off, but if he's there for another few years, I mean, he's only what twenty. Is he 25, 26? So actually, he could be a bit older than that, actually, now that, now that I think about it. I think he's actually older than he looks. Yeah. Um, let me just see here. Alex Albaman. Oh, I spelled that wrong. 27. <laughs> 27. So, I mean, look, reality is he's got probably five years oh. before there's question marks about whether he's going to stick around for a bit longer. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'd say maybe he's got one more year for Williams to really step up. So next season, if, if he sees a huge step from Williams next year, I think it's worth him sticking around and seeing if they can uh, really um, generate a, some sort of a, a challenging car over the next sort of four years or something like that. If not, if they sort of go backwards next year, I think he's done enough to prove that he's a great driver and he's probably maybe going to need to look at uh, another, another team to try and get some sort of a chance of a world championship. But, after next year, what the year after? So we're going to be talking about 2025. Probably realistically, the moves won't be on for him until 2026, new regulations. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think Williams, if, if they if they keep making this progress over the next two years, I think he's 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 in the right team. They've got the right driver for them anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Isidro, Lando Norris. Let's tackle Lando today. A, an interesting race. Again, like Albon doing a great job in, in quali, only to drop way back during the race and to claw his way back, a very decent position, only to be slapped on the wrists again by the uh, FIA um, for holding uh, up the pack to engage the double stack for McLaren. Um, he should be commended for some lovely overtakes as well and, and an exciting last lap uh, with Gasly. Um, interesting performance from from Lando over the weekend, I suppose. It was it was a very good drive from Norris. He did uh, great overtakes, uh, especially when I remember over K Mark. I think mm. it was great, and I I think he didn't deserve the unsportsmanlike behavior penalty. That was the name of the penalty he got. <laughs> yeah, uh, unsportsmanlike. I mean, he's he's a great guy. They should <laughs> great guys can't be on sports, <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I think the uh, Norris and the McLaren they they did a solid race despite the penalty. Norris did did quite good. He finished what P8, I think, 
Yeah, drop uh, back to uh, 13, I think, with that. Yeah, uh, five, five seconds seconds. penalty. So yeah. uh, I think McLaren is on the right track and Norris knows that he pushed the, the McLaren as hard as he could. He did a solid race today. Uh, too bad about the penalty that ended up in the P13, but overall, I think McLaren is on the right path and Norris knows that too. Dave? Yeah, the good thing about that is as well, they've got a uh, three, I think the next three races, they're, they've are they earmarked sort of big upgrades to come for that car. So uh could be good things to come from McLaren. Dave, was Lando being a bad boy today? Did he deserve his little slap in the bum? I don't think so. Like, I mean, I'd be honest, I fair enough. Like he, he, he yeah, broke the rules under the safety car, but like, like, like as Idro said, like, Calling it an unsportsmanlike penalty mm. says that you've done something malicious intentionally, and I don't think it was. I think it was, you know, um, I mean, okay, yeah, it, it just it wasn't what unsportsmanlike conduct would tend to to reflect. So, uh, yeah, mm. I just think the wording. But I'll be honest, we're getting hung up on it. Who gives a shit? Like, you know, <laughs> he got he got a five second penalty. End of story. Like, you know, I don't. I'd say he's not losing any sleep over it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and lastly, we'll we'll have a little jump to uh, to Alpine and Ocon. I, I didn't really notice Ocon during the race, but somehow he managed to finish P8. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be honest, I, I did, other than uh, Ocon's battle with, <clears throat> excuse me, Ocon's battle with Albon, which I sort of saw as a negative on the Alpine that they weren't able to uh, mm. to, to challenge the the, the Williams and yeah. uh, Alpine brought a good few upgrades as well to this race. So um, I would largely say either they didn't work or Williams were uh, working a lot better than theirs were because uh, yeah, otherwise I don't think they had anything really worth noting. Oh, Zidro might have something. I don't know if you noticed the the wing of Ocon's car a bit wobbly towards the end. That uh, was that Ocon or Gasly. I think that might be Gasly. But I think it was both of the, both of them. I think that's a design of the the, the wing, isn't it? Like it was Ocon, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I, I I don't know. I I don't know what purpose that would serve, like the that flexing side to side like that. But uh, yeah, it looks more like a design rather than a like there was a flaw or a fault in the the mounting of the wing. I noticed but that I, after Norris called that out, that uh, it was looking a bit wobbly. Then suddenly, Sky F1 was fucking on the back camera of the Ogon, just seeing the little wing. Yeah, we saw six, <laughs> saw six lab, laps of a wobbling wing. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I don't think we've got much more to, to really... Oh, go on, Dave, yeah. Oh, we do. I want to discuss um, our loser of the day. Oh. There, there, there is a... There, there is a what am I say a loser? That's a bit harsh. You're going but, to enjoy talking about this. I've got a feeling you're going to enjoy this conversation. I really on. am. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so the biggest loser of the day is Nico Hulkenberg. Yeah. And I like Nico Hulkenberg, but I hate Haas. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I just thought, I mean, he, they, they, they qualified P2. Then obviously he fucked up because he decided, to, you know, after he went through on with the red flags, he didn't stick to the Delta. Mm. Um, so he got the penalty, started fifth. Then... Um, Ended up just in a, like make it like he was actually doing well at the start, then made the pit stop at the wrong time. Then the you know safety car came out and he just lost big time under that safety car. Yeah. Um, and I mean, where did he finish? Did he finish 15th or something like yeah, that? 15th. Or, yeah. 15th. So, um, wow, like from the heroics of a potential front row of the grid to a P15 in proper Haas style. Mm. Delighted. Although, aren't they going to be called Alpha? Is it next year they're going to be branded Alfa Romeo now? What? It has? Yeah, it is, isn't it? The, the, they're, the Alfa Romeo are leaving Sauber. Uh, the, that sort of deal is done. So I don't know whether, I think Sauber are just going to be called Sauber next year, I think, until Audi come in. So I think um, Alfa Romeo now, it's going to be branding, or sorry, Haas will be branded as Alfa Romeo, I think. I think they're going to be the title sponsor for Haas. What? So weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. There you go. I just I had to I had to drag Hass through the muck. Um. Uh, just actually, sorry. One another little mention. Logan Sargent. Uh, like. Oh, that was a mechanical, though, was it? I, it, I it was, but he wasn't doing anything really to to fill you full of confidence. He, yeah, he's Has he's he... our Latifi this year, isn't he? Name. The only difference is Latifi at least. Yeah, safety through... cars. 
Well, I mean, it was, uh, wasn't it Logan Sargent that brought out the safety car? No, it wasn't. It was actually George Russell that brought out the safety car when he yeah. hit the wall. Yeah. Um, it was a virtual safety car. It was a virtual safety car. That's right. Yeah, no, Latifi goes all out. You know, it's, there's no half measures with Latifi. Like, he's like, if, yo, if I'm doing this, like, <laughs> hold my beer. Um, but yeah, Logan Sargent, yeah, he hasn't fucking blown my hair back now this year. I don't think he's really doing much in that car. Uh, De Vries as well. He's he's another one who I think um, not really doing doing much. Uh, Piastri though, he's he's he, I think he's hanging on to the coattails of Norris, which is a, is a great rookie season to have. Yeah. So um, so yeah, he he's he's the winner out of that. But actually, before we move on, because I know you're going to be jumping on to move on here from this, but uh, who's our driver of the day? Who's who have we all got? Albon. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Scotty. Look. Sweet I, I, Jesus, are you going to question that? No, I'm. I'm going to go with Albon, but I would. I was. I was nailed on for Russell for the longest, longest time until that that failure came through. But yeah, Albon has to be Albon. It's funny. I have. Um, I have notes half like t- towards the end of that race that I made. I made notes, kind of saying, and I was thinking, do you know what? I'm going to give. I I would give the uh, driver of the day to Russell had he overtaken Albon yeah. and got that seventh place. Cause I think to go from the back, get seventh damaged car, definitely driver of the day. But then I was like, if Albon holds him off or holds off anyone behind and gets to the, the end of the race, um, then yeah, he's the driver. And uh, yeah, that's the way it panned out. So definitely Albon, that was an absolute phenomenal drive. Yeah. Yeah. Fair play to him. Albon was like, uh, Gandalf, you shall not pass. Was <laughs> Albon for, what fifty laps today? Yeah, did great. Throwing the... his big stick around. Yeah, and his white hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all, all right. right, is it predictions time, Dave? It is predictions time. Bum bum bum. Yeah. All right. I mean, fucking. I made I made a disaster out of this. Like, I'm, I can can I say I'm delighted to have you back this week, Scotty, because <laughs> I made a shit show of last week. <laughs> Try, <laughs> chat. Trying to ask questions and answer shit at the same time <laughs> is not my wheelhouse. So um so yeah. Canada, right. Our predictions. My top three. I had Verstappen in P1. So oh, there's a point there. Mm. Like, fucking Hamilton. In P2. And Alonso in P3. How fucking close could I have been there only for yeah. fucking Alonso decided to burn his brakes? Wrong way around. Um, yeah. Okay, my top three. Happily enough for me, Verstappen in P1, Alonso P2, yeah. and Perez P3. That was totally wrong. But anyway. And oh, I got Jesus. Verstappen first, Perez second, Hamilton third. Oof. Yeah. to go. No copying of homework and uh, <laughs> neck and neck after yeah. the, the top three. All right, I thought I had get, it actually. Yeah. Let's get into the flops and surprises. Oh fuck! Sorry, I've just seen mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a loser this year, <laughs> this, this season. Like, all right. Well, I went with a flop of Leclerc DNF. Now that's not my fucking anyway. Yeah. Right. Zero goose egg. <sighs> I copied your homework and I went for the same thing and it did not happen. Zero goose egg. I got Ocon DNF and that little ovly wing almost got me. Oh, so close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would have been interesting. All right. <sighs> Surprise. <laughs> Hulkenberg, top 10. I oh, mean, man. what a shout. And I believe at the end of last season, it pained me to put that in there because it was a Haas car yeah. and. I mean, Jesus Christ. Anyway, nothing. Zero. Yeah. A uh, similar story for me. I said uh, Gasly P9, and he did not finish there. He finished P12. Goose egg. Mm. Oh, Damn. is zero. <laughs> so unfortunate. <laughs> not his top 10. Oh, oh. that's got to hurt. Unsportsmanlike. God. Yeah. That's an unsportsmanlike <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah. The FAA kept a Cedro from a win. All right, well, then that means that it was a draw this week between Scotty and Azidro, so they shared the points this week. So we update our tables, and oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, you know what that oh, means. No. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Scotty yeah. has now taken the lead at the top on four points. Yes. I am that. in second with three, and Azidro close on my heels with two. Oh, my God. Sweet Jesus. How it feels at the top of the hill. 
Maybe you should uh, kind of look into your F1 fantasy team as, <laughs> as much as you do in your weekly predictions. Yeah, yeah. All right. The- what are we going to say? Go on before we move on. No, no, no. It's great. No, it's great. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Predictions for Austria. Um, I'll be honest. I'm going to sort of lock in similar to what I had uh, this week. I'm just going to reverse the order. I'm going to go with oh. Verstappen P1. <laughs> I'm going to go with Alonso P2 and Hamilton P3. I think it will be hard to see anything other than that happening in Austria. Hmm, interesting. Okay, uh, ask, I'm going to take a punt here. I'm going to say Verstappen P1. I'm going to say Hamilton a punt. <laughs> Hamilton P2 and Russell P3. I'm going to go all out in Mercedes. I think the upgrades are going to take flight in Austria. So you're okay. You're so you're ruling out that Alonso, that, that Aston Martin, that was clearly faster than Mercedes this week, is going to be slower than Mercedes in two weeks. Yeah, I have to take a punt uh, on something. Why not? You know, makes it spicy. Yeah, exactly. All right, Isidro, who you got? I have the same uh, Verstappen, Alonso, Hamilton. Oof, oh, same as me. Okay, jeez, yeah. I thought you weren't the same. If you'd gone no. the same as Scotty, I would have been like <laughs> proper homework is being copied here. <laughs> no, same as you. Okay, so Verstappen, Alonso, Hamilton. Yeah, that's I, 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 I agree. I, I don't see that, that being changed for the, that. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, what are we up? Flop next. Uh, so I am gonna, I'm gonna double down on my Leclerc DNF. Uh, but except I'm gonna throw a crash in here. I'm not even gonna go DNF. It's not gonna be reliability. He's gonna, he's gonna bin it. Right. Interesting. Uh, because my DNF is actually science. Um, do I have to say whether it's a crash or an engine? Uh, I mean, you could play it safe and just go DNF, but if you want to be ballsy, you can call it. I'm just going to go DNF. Uh, I, I, I think it's going to be Power. a crash, but I'm going to say DNF <laughs> because I've already <laughs> taken a punt on Hamilton and Russell. Um, All right. So, signs DNF. Okay. Um, and Azidro, who you got? Signs DNF. Ooh! And you're just going to call it a DNF or are you, are you going to give us a crash reliability no. or... You, you just want to go DNF? DNF. I believe it would be a crash, <laughs> but... Uh, just hang on, hang on a second. If sh- sh- Surely I, we should get extra points if we call the DNF reason. Uh... Like, I'm calling that there's going to be a crash. You are sort of hedging your bet that it could be a crash or reliability. Is, is, surely is, I should get a point and a half for that. Is this new rule starting now? Well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this game has evolved over the last year. It's just like, ah! New rule time. <laughs> Throw it in. <laughs> One point for the NF, and you get two points if you call the the reason for the NF. Okay, and is oh. crash specific enough? Yeah. Or do I have to? Like, yeah. No, I think I, no, no, no. I think crash is okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to crash then. Um, All right, I'll go DNF engine failure, big fiery ball. I'll just it, put reliability because I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not going to hold you to a you know if it was brakes or something like that. I'm not going to say yeah. ah you got it wrong. It was yeah, no, wrong part of the car. Like this was the track last year where the the Ferrari went on fire, wasn't it? It was. Uh, yeah, the si- Signs' car wasn't Sainz, it? Signs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so reliability for Signs and Isidro, are you going to go Crash. for just the one point? Oh, you're going for two. Ooh. Crash. Wait, wait, wait. But if it doesn't oh. get crashed, but still the NF, I get the point. No, no, it don't. No, it's just the NF then. Forget <laughs> the crash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh. Okay. Just the regular DNF. Yeah, no. So if you go DNF, if it's a crash or a reliability, you get one point. But if science has a reliability issue, then you get one point, but Scotty would get two. Yeah. 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 I don't mind that. Okay. 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 All right. All right. That's good. I like that. I like this new rule. That's a nice one. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My surprise. I am going to go with both McLarens, uh, P8 and P9. Oh, that's very specific. Uh, yeah, I'll give me that all day long. <laughs> <laughs> no one else will want it. <laughs> no. No. All right. Um, I am going to go for Hulkenberg top 10. Hulkenberger. Just for the crack. Not going to happen, but did I throw it in there? T10. And uh, Isidro, last one of the of the day. What what? Uh, shock us. With Albon, top 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm, can you do no. that? He's just got P fucking 7. Yeah, no, after, you can't. After what, six races? 
you got yeah i know but the rule was always like if they came in the top 10 in the previous race you can't you can't have them as a surprise for top 10 for the next race yeah i i know that was a rule but how likely is it actually for him to get top 10 two races in a row actually well with the new upgrade it could be likely all right then yeah screw you isidro uh yeah take it away (laughs) (laughs) he changes he 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 raced six races without the top 10 and now suddenly yeah but uh, then uh, i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with the backup to know the top 10 you can oh, have that all day long. Yeah, you can, you can take that one. I, yeah. I nearly feel sorry for him. Give him back his, uh, his other give one. Him back, I nearly feel like I should give him Albon top 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, give I him Albon top 10, no, actually. Yeah, no, 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 no. If you call a position in the top 10, Ooh. we'll Benign give you Albon. Albon. Huh? B9 for Albon. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> I like how we both folded after you said Sonoda top 10. I couldn't do that. That's just an instant oh. goose egg. Like. Poor Isidro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that in future now if I uh, if I have a, a shout that I want to put in. All right. Well, look, that's it for this week. Uh, and as always, uh, you can uh, oh, follow us everywhere that we are. Hit us on Spotify, YouTube, all that usual jazz. We'll be back in two weeks for Austria. Can't wait. This is uh, this is Scotty's jam on Formula One 2022, not Love Formula it. One 2023. We can't afford that game yet. Sponsor <laughs> deal, please. Uh, and until next week, we'll see you then.